Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon. Today we welcome you to the another lecture in the uh, course of Applied Analytics and uh, we are continuing in, the in this course in the way of understanding the need for a rational decisions and how analytics both the descriptive, prescriptive and as well as the latest advanced predictive analytics, uh, how it actually helps in uh, a decision maker to make the right decisions for the organization. And today we are going to get into the concepts of systems models and the modeling process. We will look a brief overview of this and then we will take the much advanced uh, stuff. So today we are discussing systems first in a brief disc way, then models and then the modeling process. Okay. And I am Dr. Deepa Philip, I am from IIT Kanpur. So let us talk about the first thing called system. You now there is so lo lot many ways people think about system. So I would say the first thing is system word, the word system okay, is one of the most misused uh, words in, uh, in let us say that is in the world for the time being. Okay. Uh, there are many, many uh, understandings and other things about it. But in our case today when we are talking about system uh, in the phrase of analytics, in the context of analytics, we can, we can derive system, okay, we can describe system, okay, let us describe system as a set of interrelated elements that function in a purposeful manner. This is what Watson and Blackstone kind of said it in 1981. So system, the main aspects of a system is, okay, system has number one, many interrelated interrelated elements some people would like to call this as uh, entities okay these typically include man uh, machine money methods money methods etc these are all parts of the uh, interrelated elements of a system and all these interrelated elements, what do they do? They work or they function, function in a manner, uh, in a purposeful manner or in a better way to say this is a, this goes towards a common goal or common goals. So system has common goals in which all the entities of the system or all the interrelated elements of the system work together to achieve that goal or the goals. Okay. So uh, obviously system, the first important thing is the system has more than one element. Okay. This is one thing that people, we all should understand. System with more than one element means it is typically a set of elements. Okay. Let us think about it as a set of elements, more than one element. Okay. And these set of elements, set of elements that are they are these elements are interrelated okay they are connected to one another okay so when we saying that connected with one another okay this is the important aspect of the interrelation these elements of the system they are connected with one another and these elements interact with one another. So they are interrelated they are, and they also interact. So one way to think about it is they are interconnected and work together. Okay. Why do they do all of this? To reach to achieve the 
common purpose. Okay. So, all these elements the inter they these interrelated elements that interact with the uh, one another the reason these interrelated ele elements interact with each other is to achieve the common purpose or the common goal. Okay. So, as I said earlier system behavior always remember this system behavior is purposeful system behavior is purposeful which also means that implies this implies what does it commonly means it is a goal seeking behavior it moves towards a common goal. So, the goal seeking could be you know more profit okay, more economic development and okay, it could be uh, better efficiency etcetera. So, this goal will remain common multiple goals it can be different type of goals, but the system will typically will work towards a common goal that is the most important aspect of it. Now, if you draw, draw a system a system diagram if we diagram a system there are many ways people diagram the system and one of the diagram that I like the most which was originally proposed by Watson and Blackstone is system is can think about it as you know some value addition some transformation value addition slash transformation happens okay, process happens. So, there is some process involved. So, you have something called as inputs you input various aspect into the system these inputs go through what we call as processes okay. and these processes will provide you what we call as outputs. Okay. So, once we say that these are the uh, aspects of the system I am going to change the color to show you something else. So, the inputs the processes the inputs will result in processes will result in output from here it could also have something called feedback which you could go into. So, what we call as the feedback. So, the output will decide tell Okay, this output was in, in uh, as per the requirement or it was not as per the requirement. So, if the processes need to be changed it will change the processes or if the inputs need to be modified it will modify the input. Then along with this we will also have what we call as the uh, boundary of the system. So, if this is what we are focusing on to study the system then the rest of it is what we can call it as the this is what we call as the boundary okay. and through the boundary the system will interact with the what we call as environment. So, everything outside the system boundary is the environment. So, in our case what we are basically focusing on is the system where the inputs gets translated to processes the processes the inputs is supplied to processes and these processes translates the uh, inputs to outputs during this process we have feedback uh, and the feedback can uh, at times go to the feedback is provided after the output to the processes. Yeah, so, if the thing can be addressed in the processes it will use here otherwise it will go to the inputs and the system has its own boundaries what we are talking about and these boundaries is like this is where within the boundary is what we define to study the system and everything outside the boundary is the environment and systems interact with environment environment at boundaries. So, the boundaries are the place where the systems interact with the environment hope this is clear. So, we will go to the next concept. So, we talked about something called as the feedback in the system okay. and uh, feedback lot of the time people people sometimes use feedback is sometimes used uh, or considered as a 
control aspect. Okay. This is not true for us. Feedback is not just this is not always true. Okay. Here we are talking about feedback in a sense that all the system. Okay. So, what, what we talk about feedback? So, feedback for us for analytics, if you are considering analytics, feedback involves feedback involves what do we mean by feedback? It involves monitoring monitoring the actual behavior of the system, the actual behavior of the system. Okay. We are studying the actual behavior of the system uh, and comparing this behavior, comparing this behavior, okay. whose behavior? System behavior. Okay. This behavior of the system, it is compared with, compared this behavior and comparing this behavior with standards. So, if you have a standard or you have a you have an expectation that the system should behave in this particular fashion, then we use this this to basically establish we use the we monitor the actual behavior of the system and using this monitoring we actually compare the actual behavior of the system or the current observed behavior of the system is compared with the standard to see how the system is working. So, all well conceived systems will contain feedback loops. So, it allows for what we call as monitoring and in comparing or you can also call it as standardizing the system. Monitoring and comparing of systems is done very well through using feedback loops. It can be used for control, but it can also there is no rule that it should be used for control. So, what does the feedback involve? Okay. So, what happens is the what happens in feedback. Okay. So, uh, the as I said earlier what is the major thing in feedback is it involves monitoring the behavior of the system, monitoring the actual behavior of the system. Okay. This we all know this is the monitoring the actual behavior and compare with standards, compare with standards what? Okay actual behavior. Okay. You as compared with the standards. So, what now? If necessary, take corrective actions. Okay. So, sometimes this taking the corrective actions falls under the realm of controlling the system and hence sometimes people say feedback is also another way of controlling the system which in some some cases it is true, but it is not always true. Okay. Remember that. Okay. So, then when you find deviations, what happen when you find deviations in the performance? Okay. When deviations in the performance of whom? When the when deviations in the system performance, system performance, system performance deviations. Okay. If you find deviations in the system performance, what are you going to do? Okay. So, from where do you find the deviations? Obviously, these deviations are from the standards. You find some deviations from the standards or the expected performance on the system. What do we do? The most important thing is transmit such information, such information. What information? The deviation from the standards, such information to where do we transmit to appropriate locations, okay. appropriate point in the system, appropriate point, appropriate point in the system. So, in the previous diagram we have seen that we are transmitting this to, to the process level or to the input level, appropriate point in the system. Why do we transmit this? So, that, so that effective action can be taken action can be taken right. So, 
when you see when you find that the system is deviating when deviations in the performance from the standard is noted transmit that information to appropriate point in the system so that corrective actions can be taken that is one important aspects of feedback in the system and also you should remember that most systems are not self contained okay when we say that a system is self contained what do we mean by it okay what do we mean what do we mean by self containment okay the self containment means self containment implies system working in isolation okay so which implies isolation means isolation with the external environment many people would like to do this but the truth is that okay most of the time most of the time system is influenced system is influenced by its environment this is very important you should remember this that the system is influenced by its environment very rarely you get systems that are isolated the self contained system most of the systems are not self contained they work in tandem with the environment where the environmental factors the factors that are outside the boundary of the system do have its influence on to the system okay with that we talked about the concept called system boundaries okay and we like system boundary system boundary we have been repeating this term so what is a system boundary okay so remember if you think about the diagram we draw kind of this this is the inputs from there we drew the process then we draw the output okay and then we had feedback loops and other things okay which went like this as the feedback then we drew the boundary okay some an imaginary kind of a concept okay and then we said it interacts with the environment here and we called it as a boundary so boundaries are never really a rectangular boxes okay boundaries are not this is important not rectangular boxes okay we just draw it for a representative purpose it is like so it actually it represents the part of system that is being studied okay the important aspect is that it represents that part of the system that is being studied so the major reason why we do the boundaries okay why are system boundaries used they are used to establish for modeling purposes because when you are modeling uh, you don't want to study the entire system you don't want to study the system and its environment you want to focus your studies so system boundary system boundaries helps to define or focus the study in our case instead of the study it is the analysis so we focus our analysis on the system using the help of system boundaries and there hence once you establish the boundaries then you can using the boundary we can model the behavior of the system so what are we modeling here what are we modeling we are modeling the system behavior system behavior within the specified boundary all right so we are focus we are studying this within the specified boundary of the system and it is difficult to design okay so we can always and you should understand that system boundary it is quite difficult to establish okay so or it is difficult 
difficult to establish or determine it is not just difficult it is quite difficult to establish or determine to what level of detail detail the analysis should happen analysis to be done ok. So, this is a question, major question difficult to establish or determine to what level of detail the analysis is to be done. So, the boundary do help us in focusing the decision or focusing the analysis, but yes it is difficult to draw the boundary. Why? Number one reason ok. The reason is system most of the systems are made up of many subsystems ok. Because for example, uh, uh, let us take an example uh, a manufacturing system or a production system ok. A production system has many subsystems one is the inventory or the stores ok, it is an assembly line ok, painting so, so many aspects are there. But at one aspect of it is also that there is also something that you require an electrical substation. So, now the question is, is this electrical substation part of the system is within the boundary or outside the boundary. So, it is a subsystem of the production system, but it can be sometimes treated as a part of an outside system or the environment or it could be treated as part of the internal aspect as well. So, because of these many subsystems, so if your study is only focused on line balancing, balancing the assembly line to decide how fast the conveyor belt of the factory should move. So, that the production desired production can be reached if that is the focus point then studying the electrical substation is outside the boundary of the system. But if you are studying how to achieve the production with minimal use of energy then the electric electrical aspect is part of the system. So, depending upon the study so this also tells us that boundary is specified by goal of analysis ok. This is an important aspect ok. Second part is most systems are subsystems of large systems. The second reason why this becomes drawing this boundary is a big problem ok. So, uh, like for example, let us say you are studying the Maruti factory in India ok. This could be treated as a system if you study the Maruti Suzuki factory in India, but it is also a subsystem of the is a subsystem of the global Suzuki factory. So, the system that we are studying here in India as the Maruti factory is actually a subsystem of the global Suzuki factories. So, the system that we are considering at one point of is could be a subsystem of some someplace else. So, when you have subsystems then we get into this problem called if you study just focus on the optimization or making the Maruti Suzuki factory in India as the best factory then all you are doing is you are not making Suzuki the best thing you will end up doing something called as sub optimization. All system studies all analytics do suffer from this problem we will see this in the complicated problems, but remember that a system that we are studying today could be a very well be a subsystem of something else. Third part is system tend to interact and overlap with other systems. So, here what we saying is that uh, an example is the marketing system marketing system of a company sometimes tend to overlap with the production system sometimes overlap overlap with production how in what we call as setting the demand. So, the marketing people are the one who tell what is the demand for a particular product. Once you know what is the demand for the particular product that is when the production department decides how to produce or how to fulfill that demand. So, that is the place where the marketing system interacts with the production system, but there could be other situations where production system is trying to figure out what is the line balancing. 
or what is the optimal speed of the conveyor belt or which tool bit to use to drill this particular hole. They do not need to interact with the marketing system at all. Okay. Last one is last aspect of this is the necessary linkages with that of the environment. Okay. Many a times these linkages okay, uh, are complicated. Uh, so that even with clearly defined boundaries, boundaries, okay, uh, some aspects could be overlooked. Okay, so the uh, because lot of the things the environmental factors mental factors do influence system a classic example of this is the price of oil set by the opec countries do influence the quota of production of petrol and diesel from the indian oil companies Indian Oil Corporation, Bharat Petroleum Limited, they all decide their production and other aspects depending upon the price of the oil set by the countries in the Middle East. Uh, so, that is an environmental factor, the price set by the OPEC nations is an environmental factor which influencing the internal aspects of the system, let us say if you are studying the IOCL corporation as an example. Okay. So, it is not straightforward in that regard, but yes, it is the reason the system boundaries are difficult is because of all these kind of different considerations. But still, you have to do the best as you can to define the boundary of the system so that you can do some sensible anal analysis out of it. Then let us talk about models. Okay. The model sees in a way in this it is a word that is very complicated, but still in the most simplest terms what is being simulated is the system or what is being instead of using the word let us study what is being studied or what is being analyzed. Okay. Uh, the simulated might be a wrong term here. We will say that what is being studied or analyzed is a system. Whatever you are studying, let us think about it that way. Okay. What you are studying is a system. So, uh, so, in this case an example of a system will be if you are looking at how much of the product to be stored, how much of raw materials raw materials to be stored, raw materials to be stored. This focuses on the inventory system, <laughs> inventory system. So, the inventory system might not be something that you might not study otherwise if you are worried about the raw materials to be stored okay. and how does that influence the rest of the system that is a completely different story altogether. But yeah, you probably get an idea. So, if you are just studying the inventory system, then you look at the inventory model and then you sometimes find the EOQ model where you will say that uh, is the root of 2 times the ordering cost times the demand divided by the carrying cost. If you might be looking at a mathematical equation like this where you are studying the inventory and this is the in what we call as the inventory model. Okay. So, we are studying how much of a how much quantity is to be kept at one particular place and this is the mathematical way of modeling that. So, you are just focusing on that aspect of the system. So, you just study, you are not worried about what you are storing, you are only worried about the quantity of whatever is to be stored. So, here we are ignoring what is what is being kept as inventory. Okay. It could be nulled, it could be bought, it could be uh, missiles, it could be guns, does not matter. You are just worried about the inventory at this point. You are just worried about the number, the quantity, that is all you are worried about. So, to study the system, okay, assumptions or approximations are to be made. We make assum assumptions and as approximations, both logical and as well as mathematical, how the system works. So, these assumptions to a large extent becomes the helps us in making the models. These assumptions. <coughs> these assumptions helps us in the model. 
or modeling of the system. Okay. So, the assumptions that form the helps us to form the model of the system. So, in the EOQ system we assume that demand is known and does not change. So, we assume that the demand is known and it will not change. We also assume that there is enough space to store whatever the quantity is. So, there is no space constraint as we think about it. So, these assumptions based on these assumptions we study how to store some item in a factory and for that we develop a mathematical model. Okay. So, these assumptions help us in forming this model okay. and what do we why do we use models because we can use models to replicate the behavior of the real life system. So, in a inventory the model focuses on focuses on the quantity to be ordered okay, which is the Q and when to order which is the time. Okay. So, we are worried about the quantity and the time specifically in an inventory system and to do that we take assumptions and these assumptions about the system and the assumptions helps us in forming the models. So, there are multiple types of model and we will quickly go over these type of models. Okay. So, all type of models let us think about it this way okay. all models let us take about it and it can be divided as far as by Blackstone and other people can be divided into two. One model can be called as the physical model and the other one can be called as the symbolic models. Okay. The models can be either physical or it can be symbolic and the physical models are further divided into two and this is called as the iconic models and it could be the analog models okay. and the symbolic models are we will study what each one of them uh, in detail. The symbolic models can be a verbal model or it could be a mathematical model. Okay. So, uh, in a way when we talk about this we have to study let us first talk about what is a physical model that is easy to understand. Okay. Physical models <coughs> are, are physical representation of reality, representation of reality. Okay. You are physically representing the reality of the system. Okay. Whereas, what is a symbolic model? Symbolic models use symbols symbols to represent <coughs> reality okay so an example is uh, if you see a road sign something like this okay if you see a road sign like this which says Okay. on a post the sign is kept someplace then that means there is a pedestrian crossing okay it is a symbolic representation representation of pedestrian crossing which means ahead someplace there are people who are going to go across the road okay so that's what a symbolic example is so, let us look into the uh, definitions of each one of these iconic analog verbal and mathematical and see what it amounts to. Okay. So, the iconic models when we talk about it what are iconic models? The iconic models are they looks like represented reality. Okay. 
So, an example is the reality shows. So, uh, uh, displaying the behavior. So, here is an example displaying the behavior of astronauts in the international space, international station, international space station. Uh, on television okay this appears this is what we call as an iconic model it is a represented reality of what is actually going on you are not seeing what is going on in the system but you are actually seeing on a tv screen what is going on there so that becomes an iconic models now let's talk about something called as an analog model okay what are analog models so so analog models they acts like represented reality. The previous case it looks like the represented reality, in analog model it acts like represented reality. An example of this is a small scaled model of a fighter jet, jet uh, in a wind tunnel. acts like actual aircraft in flight okay so that's what we talk about here in in the analog model the iconic model both are is both these cases they are actually the physical system models okay you are actually seeing the physical system you are observing it in iconic models you are observing is through a television in an analog model you make a small model of it and that model excuse me acts like the represented reality so these two together becomes the what we call as the physical models okay now let us talk about what we call as the verbal model a verbal model or verbal models they are use of words to represent the reality So, an example is examples of these are role playing exercises or it is the commentary of a game. So, when somebody says uh, so like, like uh, if you are talking about a soccer game, you can say that the, uh, the soccer game between Germany and Brazil is going on and you say that. Oh, the uh, the currently the ball is being moved forward to the uh, Brazil half uh, by uh, Philip Lam or something like that. Then obviously, then you will see the you have in your mind the football court, and the court the ball is now past the center line, and now it's in the side in which Brazil is playing, and Philip Lam is pushing the ball forward. That's how you will look at it. So when somebody is using words to describe what is actually going on, that becomes a verbal model lot of the commentaries about the game is an example of a verbal model. Then let us talk about the last one which is called as a mathematical model or mathematical models. Mathematical model means this is the usage of mathematical symbol, mathematical symbols to represent reality. Okay. So, for example, when you do an equation something like this, y is equal to mx plus b. So, in this case, x represents the slope of the line or it actually represents the rate of change of a rate of change of y with respect to to rate of change of x right. So, how, what is delta y by delta x? How is the y changing with respect to x? So, in a realistic scenario you can think about when you draw a line something like this, this is what we are talking about delta y, this is the rise increase the rise 
in change to that of delta x, the change of x. Physically, if you have a, a, a mountain, then that slope of the mountain can be very well be expressed by the, this particular equation. So, you are not seeing it as a mountain, but you are seeing it as a line, a straight line with a particular slope. And so, if you, so then using that you can decide if you want to climb this, you know how much of effort is required and all other aspects of it. So, these two things, okay, what we talk about it, these are what we call as the symbolic models. Okay. Either we are using verbal symbols or we are using mathematical symbols. With this, I hope uh, you guys have understood and I uh, have an overview of what is a model, what is the process of modeling, what is how is it related to the system, what is the boundaries of a, a system and how it helps in modeling and what are the different type of models. And e for each one of these cases, we mostly will be focusing on what we call as the mathematical models as part of analytics. Okay. We will see in the next class on uh, the ad some more as advanced aspects of uh, this uh, uh, analytics or how the decision process in analytics are taken or considered together and how analytics leads to different type of decisions and different decision layers what we covered yesterday and then we will go from there. Thank you.